Hi, I'm a happy Barry Gordon. And I'm Andre Coleman. <laughs> and it's News Wrap, live at five. Now you're ad-libbing on me on the oh, open. Oh, yeah. Sorry I didn't see that, that one coming open oh, at I'm all. I'm happy. I'm a happy man. I just, I'm so happy. Wow, well, break it down to me. What's going on? What's going on? We just, look, you know, uh, people can say. You almost make it seem like the Dems won the house or something. People can make it say like it wasn't everything that we wanted it to be. And maybe it wasn't everything we wanted it to be. But it was a pretty darned exciting night. I mean, I thought, I thought it was it was absolutely amazing, and and there was there's proof of that too, and I want to show the proof. Okay. Okay. I want to show the proof that I don't know how they came up with this concept, but the uh, New York Times printed these two maps. Now here's a map. Bunch of red arrows. A bunch of red arrows, and what it shows are all of the districts, there are like over 100. Okay. All of the districts that voted more Republican on Tuesday than they did on Election Day 2016. Okay, so this is the growth from 2016 to 9. This is how much more Republican. Now, right. even that means even if a Democrat won, it just of course. means... The vote was more whatever. It I moved. Don't know. No, it moved. not if the Democrat won. But yeah, it moved, right? right it became right. more Republican, the percentage. Okay. Okay. That. <laughs> Let me guess. <laughs> I call that a blue wave. That's now, a, that's, that might be a tsunami. That is a pretty blue wave. 317 congressional districts out of 435 voted more Democratic than they did two years ago. Look at the South. Look at the South. That was the thing that, that stands out to me. Is Look the at the South. I know. I know. It's, it's well, you had Texas. You had wins Texas. in Texas. Well, I mean, I, I, you had wins. We didn't get the big win of Stacey Abrams, but we had wins in Georgia because people came out for her. We had wins in Texas because people came out well, for better or And that's what I was going to say is that's when I started to consider it a wave was when the Democrats began to win in places mm -hmm. where they traditionally do not win. And you saw the effects of Beto O'Rourke. Yes. Uh, you saw the effects of, of Gilliam. You saw these, these exactly. moments happening. Exactly right. And you realize that they can win in these places with the right candidate and the right campaign. They picked up as many seats, I think, although some are still uh, too close to call mm -hmm. out here in, in California, but they picked up, I think, as many seats in Virginia as they did in California. That's amazing in itself. That's amazing in itself because everybody says that California's Blue, 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 and yeah. we certainly proved that. It's a gimme. With the state election. Um, but it's, it, it is really, I think, what they did in the face of gerrymandering, in the face of voter suppression, in the face of all of the obstacles against them, which all would move against any possibility of a wave they broke through. So what was the big lesson here for you, the big moment, the big message that came out of this election? I heard, uh, you know, I've, I heard, of course, I listen to other pundits mm -hmm. and, you know, and one really struck me and it kind of parallels. I love books. Um, I love, you know, I read a lot of You're tell me to read another books book. and political science books. I'm not necessarily going to tell you to do that because this one is really a political science book. Okay. It's a lot of figures, a lot of data, a lot of stuff. So I don't know if you have the patience for that. I don't. Okay. But, you know, being a teacher, I, mm -hmm. I read stuff like that and I've always read stuff like that. And, you know, books that I call How We Got Here books. Okay. And I'm reading two great books right now, actually. One, one, on, uh, one on my Kindle, actually reading it, and then the other one listening to it in the car. But they're saying the same thing. And, what the, and then I heard a pundit kind of capsulize it. And they asked if there was a blue wave, and he said no. 
Okay. There is not a blue wave. What there is, is a realignment. And that's much more long lasting and much more difficult to deal with than a wave. Because a wave implies the kind of old way we looked at politics. It comes and it goes. Where it comes and it goes, the pendulum swings, you know, you're Republican one day, you're Democratic the right, next, right, right. you know. And that's changing. It's really changing. And and some people think it's changing for the worse because they love the concept of everyone getting along and everyone being bipartisan. And I say, in a way, it's changing for the better because it's, it's forcing people to make choices about their values, about who they are, what they want. And when you looked at the exit polls, you saw that a majority of this country, and, and Michael Moore makes this point in, in Fahrenheit 11.9, the majority of this country is progressive. So these books are saying that it's more definitive. Exactly right. It, the parties have now defined themselves. They, they are not grab bags of, of just a lot of people who want to be elected. They represent something. And the other thing is that it has led to the growth of what's called negative partisanship. Mm -hmm. And negative partisanship basically means what you were saying I was waiting for us to last get week, which was that we go out and we vote to keep the other side out. from being able right. to promote their way of life, right. their values, because we actually believe, and the Republicans believe it as strongly as we mm -hmm. do, if not more strongly, that there is a right and a wrong in of all of this. Of course. And, you know, and, and we, were, we were talking earlier today about the fact of bipartisanship. And it was easier when the argument was, well, are we going to raise taxes or lower taxes or have more government or less government? Because then you might argue, well, the sweet spot is somewhere right. in the middle. We can do this right? and that. Exactly. A little of this, a little a of A little that. of this, a little of that. Right. And maybe we don't want government to be you know, like communist government, right. obviously. But we and can we add don't a little want more to no it. government, right. so where do we land? We can add a little more to it, right. but not too much. Yeah. You can't do that with race. You can't do that with gender. You can't do that with LGBTQ rights. Mm -hmm. you, you kind of sort of can do that with guns, except there hasn't been a big desire not to yet. do that. Not yet. But did you look at the exit polls? Because 60% want stricter gun control. Uh, two thirds want to keep Roe v. Wade. Um, uh, three quarters, I think, want to keep health care as a right. I mean, all of the things that the Democratic Party represents are the things that the majority of the people want. So where is the rub? The Electoral College. Exactly. And the Senate. Exactly. Where you, and you saw it because the Senate is over-representing rural yeah. sparsely populated districts and underrepresenting that the Senate does not represent a majority of no. the population. No, it's not it's not equal representation. No, not at, at all. all. Because if you look at and watching the map, I know you're an MSNBC guy, I'm a CNN guy. Mm -hmm. When they were doing the map and they were talking about Texas. And you see these little dots where Ted Cruz had to win. Right. And you see these big population centers where O'Rourke was winning, O'Rourke. Right. Uh, it showed you that if you have enough people living in Beverly Hillbilly land, you can be elected mm -hmm. versus living in Austin, Dallas, or Houston. Very true. And that... Uh, but the key is that Austin, well, Austin has always been somewhat liberal. Right. The others but turning. Dallas and Houston right. were not liberal at all. And now they've turned or are beginning they have to turn. Turned, and they are definitely turning. And, and Dallas County came out huge yeah. and better O'Rourke. And, and that's, see, that was the big message to me, is that the electorate can change quickly. Right. But after it changes, how do you hold it and keep it there? That's right. Is what we have to look at now. Yes. We also have to look at how we keep our audience. And one way is to uh, have you guys call up. 
So uh, we're here at 626-794-8585. And also, please like us, follow us, subscribe to and us. And comment. And comment at NewsRap at NewsRap Pass and uh, the NewsRap page on Facebook yep. and uh, wherever else you can find us. All right. I did my job. Now, I think we have a okay. brief package, right? I think we do have a brief package, yes. The Democrats took control of the House of Representatives while Republicans won the majority in the Senate. Attorney General Jeff Sessions joins the list of dismissals from Trump's White House. Sessions resigned the day following the midterm elections at the president's request. Sessions Chief of Staff Matthew Whitaker has been appointed as interim attorney general, bypassing Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, who would have been next in line. Rosenstein is said to have discussed invoking the 25th Amendment to have Trump removed. Residents of Thousand Oaks are left with lots of questions following a mass shooting that took place at a bar Wednesday night. Witnesses say that the gunman, identified as Ian David Long, a former Marine corporal, entered the bar around 1120, throwing a smoke grenade as he opened fire, shooting the bar security, and then turning the gun on the bar's patrons. The shooting left 12 dead and 29 injured, including a sheriff deputy who was killed while responding to the call. The gunman was also found dead inside the bar. The motive for the shooting is still not clear, but many are looking at PTSD as a possible factor. Justice Ruth Ginsburg, 85, the Supreme Court's oldest member, was hospitalized after a fall that caused three fractured ribs. Ginsburg is expected to have a full recovery. Proposition 10 to expand rent control was rejected in Thursday's election. Pasadenans approved local measures I and J to support a three-quarter of a cent sales tax increase. Funds raised by Measure I are intended to secure funding to local services and citywide infrastructure needs. Measure J is designed to set aside a percentage of the sales tax to support the Pasadena Unified School District. Officials with the city and the school district are meeting to develop plans for how the revenue share will work. PUSD is still having to make cuts in spite of the spending support from Measure J. Superintendent Brian McDonald was quoted as saying that tough decisions still need to be made in order to meet the November deadline set by the county. Los Angeles County has made it clear that $10.1 million have to be cut from the PUSD budget over two years in order to avoid a takeover. Well, that uh, this was a busy week. Even, it was. Even besides the election, yeah. a lot, th a lot of election. things happened. And congratulations, folks, and thank you uh, for uh, voting for, just for me, Measure I and J. Um, Big victories. Because those were huge victories. Yeah, I was very 7%. surprised. Uh, I do wish that 10 had passed, but, um, you know, the, all, of the, all of the advertising was against it. Yeah, my except two Except for, tenants, like, one ad that I saw my twice. My two, 10, and 6 both went the way that I didn't want them to go. So I wanted them to repeal. Oh, you did? Yeah. Why would you want them to do that? Come on, man. They get all this money all the time, and they've been blowing it. Where's our money been going? Well, we'll see. Hopefully, with a new governor, it might go well, somewhere. Good. Yeah, hopefully now they do the right thing with it. But 10, I was with you. Completely and totally voted for it. Yeah. Thing, but 10. Oh, I didn't so, know you were. Oh, okay. I didn't know either until I got in there. Really? I had planned to go one way, and then I got in there, and really? I went the other way. So it is what it is. Well, it was an interesting night. It was really an interesting night when, when uh, what was it, Kansas um, elects a, a lesbian uh, martial arts uh, expert who's Native American <laughs> to Congress. Well, I think the uh, rainbow. Change is in the air. <laughs> I think the rainbow in the, in the, in the uh, Democrats that won was apparent. Oh, it was. Um, it I, was. Think, I think karma was amazing, too, the woman who wouldn't issue gay marriage license loses a re-election bid oh kim davis to yeah. a gay man yep. so kim meet karma karma meet kim that's right that's how that goes lucy mcbath but then the next day barry who's, who's i think son was was killed yes. by a policeman yes and um and beat karen handel and if you don't remember that name, Karen Handel, that was that's a pretty famous name in political activist circles, because she's the one that beat a fellow named John Ossoff, yeah. uh, and everyone had a lot of high hopes that maybe we would break the red wall there, but we broke it this time. So then, pivoting forward, the next day, the next day, the day after the election began, well, that was the firing of Sessions. Then, right? Huge and an and a unbelievable unbelievable press conference yeah 
Um, Take a look at this. Yeah, let's. If we, I'm just going to show it to you. Yeah, we're we're just going to run some of this because you do have to see it to believe it. And I know you, you Trumpians out there, if there are a few, (laughs) you're going to love it. You're going to say, "Oh, isn't that fun?" You know, because you're looking for great reality TV. But I'm looking for a president. So, Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to challenge you on on one of the statements that you made in the tail end of the campaign. Uh, in, in the midterms. That here, this, here we go. That, well, if Let's you don't go. mind, Let's Mr. Go. President, Come on. that this caravan was an invasion. As you know, yeah, I, Mr. President, I consider it to be an as invasion. As you know, Mr. President, the caravan was not an invasion. It's, a, it's a, a group of migrants moving up from Central America towards the border with the U.S. Thank you for telling and me that. Uh, why, why, did you, why did you characterize it as such? Uh, because and, I consider it an invasion. You and I have a difference of opinion. But do you think that you demonized immigrants in not this election no, to try I to want keep them, I want them to come into the country, but they have to come in legally. You know, they have to come in, Jim, through a process. I want it to be a process. And I want people to come in, and we need right. the people. Your you know, campaign, wait, your campaign. Wait, wait, you know why we need the people, don't you? Yeah. Because we have hundreds of companies moving in. We need the people. Right. But your campaign had an ad showing migrants climbing over walls and well, so on. Well, that's true. It poor, it, but they it, weren't actors. They're not going to be doing they that. They weren't actors. Well, no, it's true. Do you think they were actors? They weren't actors. They didn't come from Hollywood. Right. These were these were people. This was an actual. You know, it happened a few days ago, and uh, they're hundreds of miles away. Though they're hundreds and hundreds of miles you know away. That, that's I not an invasion. Should, honestly, uh, I think you should let me run the country. You run CNN. All right. And if you did it well, your ratings well, let would me be ask, much better. If I, if I may okay, ask one enough. other question, Mr. President, if I may, if I may uh, ask Peter, one other ahead. question, are you worried? Of, that's enough. That's Mr. enough. Mr. President, I, well, that's I was enough. going to ask one of the, the other folks. That's had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Mr. Excuse President, me. that's enough. Mr. President, I had one other Peter, question. If go. I may ask on on the Russia investigation, are you concerned that? That you may have I'm not concerned about anything with you the may Russian investigation because it's a hoax. Are you, That's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? Mr. President. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Go ahead. I, I think that's unfair. You're a very rude person. The way you treat Sarah Huckabee is horrible. And the way you treat other people are horrible. You shouldn't yeah. treat people that way. Go ahead. In, in, go in ahead, Jim, Peter. Go in, ahead. In Jim's defense, I've traveled with him and watched him. He's a diligent reporter who busts. Well, I'm not like a big fan of, of yours either. So I understand. Know, to be honest. So let, me, so let me ask you a question, if I can. You repeatedly you said are, you are the best. <sighs> We're going to deal with that for another two years. Well, I, I don't know how. I mean, I, I I just think that someone should have just punched him. I honestly think that someone just when when he said you shouldn't be at CNN. I probably, at that point, would have said, well, you asshole shouldn't be standing up there because he shouldn't be. He lost the popular vote. Uh, and I'm sorry. I mean, how did we do this, America? How did we do this? I just, I just don't understand it. I'll never understand it. I'm an old man. I'm going to be 70 well, years old. Well, let me congratulate and you. And I can't see this happening to my country let me congratulate without you. pain. And identify the issue. The issue here is that you just took a bigger stance than CNN did. And it's their reporter. CNN is going to go right back and cover every plane landing, every rally. You know it. Every sneeze, every time he changes his tie. So... Why wouldn't he do this? Because there's no repercussion. CNN will not take a stance. No. And, and, and CNN and Morning Joe yeah, and all of those stand. shows, they created Donald Trump. Of course. They created they Donald Trump. And time. you want to talk about karma, I guess it's karma. There it because, is. Because I was just listening to that book, that I'm, one of the books that I'm listening to called Identity Crisis, where they were actually saying that they would show... Every of rally course. of Donald Trump's, yeah. when Hillary Clinton had a rally, they would have pundits talking while or, they would show her silently or, show her or not th- show her at all. Show her for 30 seconds and then cut yeah. out of it. Exactly. But here's the deal. They have yet to say to Donald Trump, the First Amendment is bigger than you and it will be here when you are gone. That's right. I'd stop showing him. He needs an audience. That's right. He's a performer. He needs to not take his ass off TV. Well, MSNBC did not show. Uh, remember, I think this was just before the election. 
and he was going to have this big announcement about the, about the caravan. They didn't show it. Yeah. What they said was, we're going to fact check it first. That's what you do. And then we'll show it to you. If you know the caravan claims are lies, don't show them. Right. That's how you stop him. That's how you in let Fox show it. Show something else. Right. Exactly. And then if you need to cover news like policy, you cover it. Exactly. But the rest of this craziness, it's a dumpster fire. It is. It is. And um, yeah, Trump gets me mad when I see And mentioning him. fires, there are wildfires. Not fires. you though. You don't get me <laughs> mad. So call us up. 626-794-8585 and visit us on Facebook. Uh, and in the meantime, you know, we don't only have that idiot to deal with, but we've got nature again. And, yeah, wildfires uh, in Malibu. Horrible. Right? Thousand Oaks. Thousand Oaks, right after they go through the shooting. Horrible fires. So please, if you have relatives, if Be you safe. have friends in the area, please make sure they're safe. Um, you, and, know, the, uh, you know, the Westworld um, set, uh, was destroyed. Really? Yeah. I kind of like because that. Because it's up at Paramount Ranch. So it did get to the ranch. Yeah, it got to Paramount Ranch and, and it uh, burned down. Caitlyn Jenner's house, I think I heard that was destroyed. Really? Um, and just people fleeing, man. I, I saw some really scary footage of a family trying to get out of one of the fires. I don't know why they were videotaping it, why they were trying to make their, their escape. And they didn't even know if they were driving towards the fire or away from it. Yeah. It was so scary, and people, you know, people have lost their lives, uh, that kind of thing. I mean, there just has to be better ways for us to do what we do in California. Um, I had an expert tell me earlier this year, in the summer, one of the biggest issues is we are living in places where we didn't live 30 years ago. Right. And those are places where the fires are breaking out. Right. So, too crowded. One of the one of the one of the issues we're facing. It is. It is. What. Um, going back to the election. Okay. So what do you think the implications are for 2020? The thing that, that impacted me the most about Tuesday was that the Republicans were unable to defend their seats in the House, uh, a majority of them, a huge number. And a lot of the things, well, not a majority. They they definitely defended right. a vast majority of their seats, but we well, were able to pick off. Uh, well, you know, okay. Well, some that's thirty what I mean. of them. Yeah, they couldn't defend what they needed to defend. Right, to hold the majority. And uh, you had established people in very close races. Mm -hmm. Ted Cruz. Yeah. For example, so they have to come up with another strategy mm -hmm. as they go towards twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have to, Congress has to start thinking, literally, presidency be damned, because half of the people who helped write, make sure I'm saying this right, the tax bill yeah. lost their seats in the GOP. So, and that's what they campaigned on, this tax break they gave people, and they lost their seats. No, that went nowhere. So, they're going to have to connect or try to connect back to the American people. Yeah. We come back to, again, the base is just not enough. So where we, if, if the country is going more progressive and it's even more progressive in two years, then they're in trouble, is what I would say right now. That's what I would think. And I don't see this dude getting better as far as being able to connect with people and go out and help them save themselves in the, in the Senate. So I don't think you can. I think the most significant thing that happened in the election that is going to have the biggest impact on 2020 is um, the, the Republican loss of the suburbs. Oh, yeah. Which exactly. Mitt Romney owned mm -hmm. in 2012 and which no longer is going to be with the Republican Party. I mean, I, I don't want to say, because this, this could sound funny. I, I, we have a comment, though, and I'm going to hold okay. my thought so that we can look at the comment. And I think it should impeachment be the main goal of the Dems in Congress. I can't say who this is from, but it says, should impeachment be the main goal of the Dems in Congress? Or should they focus on policies? Or they should focus on policies. Here's the problem with the policy idea. And I agree, they should focus on policies. Here's the problem, though. They only have one House of yeah, Congress. you can't get policies through. Right. So they don't have the presidency, and they don't have the Senate. 
so they can propose the greatest agenda in the world, and they're not going to be able to get it through. And then the American public, who is not the most informed on politics, will only be looking for one thing. Were there any results? Right. And the answer is going to be no. Right. Right. And then they're going to blame the Democrats they're going to say, oh, well, the Democrats weren't able to do anything either, and maybe we'll look at the Republicans again. And we'll go into this silliness again. So that's the problem with focusing on a policy agenda, and I don't quite understand why the Dems are really laying on that. But on the other hand, you asked about impeachment, and I would say about impeachment, Stephen, I, I guess it's Stephen or maybe not. Well, that might be another. Okay. Uh, yes, I agree that we need to seed the future generation uh, instead of maintaining the, the status. Stat Absolutely. And we should put forward an agenda, but we also have to explain to the people, this is what we stand for, right. but you're probably not going to get it. So if you want it in two years, you've got a great way to go. Okay, back to impeachment. Give us a Senate and give us uh, a president. So you were making an And then we can get, we can do these things for the future generations. So you were making an impeachment point. The impeachment point I make is we don't have to talk about impeachment at all. If it happens, it's going to come up because there's going to be a reason to do it. They should see if there is a reason to do it and not bury it under the rug. That's what Democrats I'm gonna, can I'm going to only disagree with you on the policy this way. Okay. I think they can push common sense bills if they can get the media to hype it up and force the Senate to act on them and lay it on the Senate. Maybe. Maybe infrastructure, but, maybe opioids, and, maybe. And maybe health care. No, I don't think but, so. I don't, I don't think, think that's they've where they've got the I votes think, for I think that. that's where the best bet is. But we're going to continue this on Facebook. So for Andre Coleman and Barry Gordon, this has been News Wrap Live at 5. Stay with us. We're going to have some Facebook chat. All right.